Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel and we're going to talk about some book updates, what I'm currently reading, what have I read so far this month, and a little bit of a book haul. Alright y'all, so this is just a mishmash of updates because it's November the 11th and I'm so busy with vlogmas content that I honestly don't even know what to put out for you guys this week. <laughs> honestly, I'm just in the mood for vlogmas edits videos like every day there's gonna be a video in December pretty much for the first 24 days at least and I'm busy <laughs> so I'm like trying to get stuff done but I do want to update you guys and have some relative content is it relative is it the word relevant <laughs> the wrong word <laughs> relevant content okay up-to-date content on some stuff okay i don't know what to do in december pre-filmed for like everything but you get the updates all right so first off what have i been reading what am i currently reading what are the weekend reads where am i in my bible reading what have i hauled i've got some books that i've recently got so let's do that real quick first what am i currently reading well, what am I not currently reading is more like it because I am unhinged. I feel like I'm reading so many things at once. But first off, we're going to talk about The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I am really enjoying this, you guys. Like, I need to know. The writing in this is so just like immersive. This is a secular mystery, I guess. I, fiction, it says. But it's almost like questionable mystery. I don't even know what this is but <laughs> this is crazy we're at this place called Blackheath and it's like a masquerade ball there's all these guests all these different things and we start off with this guy Sebastian you're starting I think they say it's like Clue I've not gotten any other characters yet but you're starting off this guy named Sebastian and really you don't know it's him right off until like the like middle of the chapter I guess. <laughs> How does, does this guy got amnesia? What? You know? And so you see real quick that he's in the woods. There's a murder of somebody that's went on that he's seen. This girl named Anna. And he's like, who's Anna? It's like he's lost his memory. And so you're just trying to figure out all these different clues of like what's going on. And what's weird is like Evelyn Hardcastle, I still ain't there yet with her. I don't know who that is yet. I know we've seen Michael Hardcastle. But like this says... At a masquerade ball thrown by her parents at her English country house, Evelyn Hardcastle will die. She will die every day until Aiden Bishop can identify who murdered her and stop the killer. So it's like, it says Aiden wakes up at Blackheath house in the body of a different guest at the gala he attended the night before. So I'm like, is it Aiden? That's really, are we seeing the point of view of Aiden? Inside these different characters? Is that why the memory's gone for Sebastian? I don't know. I'm just... I am here for this, though. Like, either way, I'm completely immersed. Every time I read this, I'm taking notes. I've got, like, a page of notes per thing. Like, no joke. Y'all will see. Look. We have... <laughs> this is all, like, the first chapter, Okay. You know, uh, a man who has no memory of who he is or why he's there in the forest calls out Anna. A man gives him a compass in the woods. He tells him, there's no spoilers here, tells him how to get home. He gets back. People call him Sebastian. The compass was actually his. It has his initials on it. He has her gunshots in the forest. Anna's feared dead. He is frustrated and wants to find Anna. Let's leave that right now. There's a doctor. He comes in and it's like, is Sebastian going to be accused of being the killer? We don't know. And... There is um, this man who found Sebastian there, you know, all this stuff. And the, the doctor sees, like, a bump on his head. But he's like, look here, I'm more um, interested in, like, the, the cuts on your arm because you're bleeding. And he's like, what? Uh, so, uh, he's got knife wounds on him. And we don't know. That's about, that's the first intro, okay? Then you've got 20 people that are staying at the Blackheath. And then there's 30 more arriving at the ball. Someone in had whispered to him where to go in the forest. It's a whole thing, like, I, I, our narrator of this guy, I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> so, yeah, very, very interesting. And it's really, like, all of chapter one through three. That's everything that happened in one through three. We're following Sebastian. I don't know. 
I'm interested to see what happens. I, I, I'm really interested to see these multiple characters where we're at. The synopsis makes it sound like we're going to have multiple characters. Like, who's Aiden Bishop? I need to get there, okay? So, <laughs> I've not got there. So, that's about the update as far as I can go on that. I don't want to get too far in because I want, I think, like, it's fun to go in blind with this. But, like, I just now read, reread the synopsis and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it just hit me. I'm like, okay, where's Aiden Bishop? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> we'll figure that out. So I'm keep I'm continuing to read that and that's probably gonna take me a little bit to be honest with y'all but I'm also reading through Little Women it's been a few days I need to read at least one or two chapters this weekend so yeah all right I ain't gonna make it till <laughs> December but uh, I am like 25 30 percent then I'm gonna dive into Everyone at Theologian by Felicia Masonheimer this is the book club pick for Keisha's Revive book club I will leave her information down below but I haven't started this just yet I plan to at least by tomorrow on Sunday at some point at least the first chapter so yeah this is a Christian nonfiction. really excited to read through this Bible reading tomorrow I'm going to start in 2nd Thessalonians I think it's pretty short uh, so I may just go ahead and read the whole thing but that's what I'm going to read this weekend because I finished with 1st Thessalonians and then we have got the star of the show and that is joy in christ's presence by charles spurgeon let me just say the emotions i have felt while reading this wow all i can say is i the the, the highlights will say it all like sorry i'm on chapter six but like do you see look at this look at all of the highlights of this so if you didn't know my girl Chrissy and we got Dia from Novel Idea and Tiffany over at Beautiful Beautiful Minutia, if I get the words out. They are doing a read along for this book. And I am just I need this book. It's all I can say. It's a beautiful Christian nonfiction. I don't know that I'll ever look at nonfiction, Christian nonfiction, the same again. This is literally one of my favorite books of the year. Maybe it's definitely top five. Like, definitely the top Christian nonfiction of the year. I think every believer should read this. It's very, very interesting. I didn't, I've never read Spurgeon. Just the way that he writes. I mean, I'm wrecked while reading this. I mean, I am convicted and thankful and grateful and just all of the emotions of everything about the Lord. No matter where we are in our faith walk, he is always there. And we, it talks about how we fall short and we may drift, but no matter what, we can always still go back and meet him again. And just today, he traverses the mountains. It is easy too for Christ to come over the mountains for our relief. It is easy for the gazelle to cross the mountains. It was created for that purpose. Likewise, it is easy for Jesus too, for he was ordained long ago to come to man in his worst condition and to bring with him the Father's love. What is it that separates us from Christ? Is it a sense of sin? You have been pardoned once, and Jesus can renew most vividly a sense of full forgiveness. But you say, alas, I have sinned again, and fresh guilt weighs on my heart. He can remove it in an instant, for the fountain appointed for that purpose is open and is still full. It is easy for redeeming love to forgive the child's offenses, since he has already obtained pardon for the criminal's iniquities. It is with his heart's blood he won our pardon from our judge. He can easily enough bring us the forgiveness of our father. Like, the depth, the depth in this. It is so good. I, I mean, I, I highly recommend this. It's going to be five stars, you guys. Like, literally the best Christian nonfiction I've ever read so far. Like, sorry, I dropped my bookmark. <laughs> so good so good and there are live shows i've been participating in the chat in the live shows with chrissy dia and tiffany tiffany's dad was on the first one it was amazing go back and watch it i will leave it down link, link down below but every sunday they are doing like a live show on this and you read there's a few chapters a week and you kind of have to sit with this for a little bit like i've had to really just sit with this think about it and just reflect in my own life on each part really each chapter it's like you can't really just read it all at once. I have to read it very slowly and take it in. And it's just beautiful. So, highly recommend this. This is definitely the highlight of the weekend, okay? I'm not doing like a formal mid-month wrap-up. Let's just talk about really quick the books I finished so far. I did finish Return of the King really quickly. I think I finished this like November the 4th so or 3rd, something like that. And all I can say is phenomenal, okay? I'll, I'll tell y'all more in the final wrap-up, but 
I gave this one four stars. It wasn't quite the five star level like the other ones, but there's this whole series was phenomenal. Overall, this series, I'm so glad that I finally finished it. I'm proud of myself. Praise the Lord. I finished it. I had a goal to finish this trilogy this year and I did. So yay, we love to see it. I'm so glad. It's definitely one I could reread. I, I love the narration from Andy Sarkis. Highly recommend. So yeah, more thoughts to come though. I have a full review on my blog. I'll link it down below if you want to read it. That's pretty much what I'm going to say in, in, in a wrap up. You know what I'm saying? Then I finished In a Far Off Land. I gave this five stars. I'm not even going to go into it, but this book, it's, it's just like, this is really just a prodigal daughter story that made me so emotional. I cried. Uh, the girl goes through a lot of things. There's a lot of triggers in it. Again, reviews going to be linked down below. I will, like I said, discuss in full detail in a wrap up, but I just want to mention, like I said, the ones I've read so far, wow that's all i can say it's like 4.5 to 5 there's a couple of things missing for me on a couple parts but overall it's still really wonderful loved it then i've read the santa suit i don't want to want to say much i did give it five, four stars i'll talk more about it later because i have a vlog so i'm debating like do i put this in a wrap up probably not because i've got a whole vlog dedicated to my thoughts with these things okay Th this one is one for the vlog and i finally finished it so yeah i do have a review written um but yeah, I'd rather talk more about it in a video later in the Vlogmas stuff. <laughs> yeah, then I've got the Christmas Joy Ride that I finished last night. Oh, I skipped over one, my bad. I'll come back to it. <laughs> the Christmas Joy Ride. Uh, this is not part of a vlog, so I can talk about it. But um, I gave this one four stars. Super cute. Melody Carlson. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, it had like this woman who um, they were traveling, and she's an older woman. I love stories with, with like, grandparents. I just do. She's in her 80s, and they're traveling to Phoenix and helping people with Christmas along the way, and there's a little romance at the end that was kind of insta-lovey, but, like, it, they didn't say love you. That's good. I was like, please don't say I love you, because y'all just mad, but thankfully, they didn't say I love you. I think they did say something about falling for, she's falling for him or something, but, like, it was still really a nice Christmas rate, and I'm definitely keeping this one, so, yeah, um, more thoughts to come. <laughs> and then I did finish Matthew Perry's uh, memoir, y'all. What you say? Friends, lovers, and the big terrible thing. Lots of thoughts with this. Lots of language. That's all I'll say on that. As far as content, he does go into some talks topics about his, he does say lovers. So there's some discussions on his lovers, we'll say, uh, that I could have lived forever not knowing. But I will say, I am so glad I read this. I did not rate it just because... I don't want to write memoirs. He has passed away. He does talk about God. And I just truly hope he knew the Lord. So that's what I'm going to talk about in the wrap up. This is just kind of like a preview of it. But, you know, I, I really hope that he knew the Lord. Um, with everything that he talked about, his way of talking about things was very interesting. And his addiction was so sad. And just everything he went through was eye-opening. And I know this book is helping other people through addiction. So I I'm glad I read it. So, um... Yeah, there were some things I didn't care for for his language when he talked about God a couple times, uh, you know. But overall, I still am glad I read it. It, it. He has a lot of F words. He does have a lot of F words, S words, pretty much every word in this. So be warned of that. But I don't discredit it for that because that's the real him. And it just, we saw the real Matthew Perry in this book. And again, I'm glad I read it. I listened to the audio. He narrated it. So, you know, um, I'm glad that I finish that. So more thoughts to come on that as well in the wrap up. So I just wanted to kind of do a quick a recap of what I've read so far. And then we're going to do like a little haul. Yeah, just a little mini book haul here. Uh, we, I got the secret book of Flora Lee by Patty Callahan Henry. This I got because girl Carmen recently read it. Her channel will be linked down below. Uh, she had a blog on this, I want to say. And it sounded very interesting. I need to know. So uh, I ended up getting this on Amazon. And they had like a little buy two, get one kind of thing. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> and then I bought book number one in the Baxter series, I think. Yeah, um, Redemption, Karen Kingsbury. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've been wanting to read this series. So I got that. And then um, I did get a Mimi Matthews, The Work of Art. This is Somerset Stories. Um, I love this cover. And I don't know anything about it other than she's a clean um, clean author. I think sometimes she might have mild language. I don't know how clean, 
you know, things will be, but it's, it's a historical romance. So I know I've heard she's clean, you know, and the one I read was clean. Then Jeanette over at Jane Reads recommended this series. And I actually found the whole series on Pango Books really cheap and just used my credit to get these. The first one is, this is Lynn H. Blackburn, by the way. And it's the Dive Team Investigation series. And it, it came out several years ago, I think. But um, the first one had some damage, but wasn't too bad. Two and three were like perfect condition. So, but it's beneath the surface. I'm going to show y'all. Did I even show y'all? <laughs> the second one is In Too Deep. And the third one is One Final Breath. These are literally in perfect conditions, these, like, these last two. So, yeah, these are romantic suspense. I don't really know anything about them. Look at me buying a whole series when I still ain't read really Lynn H. Blackburn. Other than, I think, a novella. So, <laughs> we're here. So, anyway, um, those are some books I recently got in the mail. Just a little mini book haul. And that's kind of all my updates for right now. I, like I said, I'm so focused on Vlogmas right now that, like... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. I'm really hoping to try to get at least two videos still out a week for you guys, but there may only be one video out this week. I don't know. I have no plans for the rest of the week, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I can do a little vlog reading something. I don't know. At least if it's like a 10 minute video, that'd be nice. That's pretty much it for me. I hope y'all are doing well whenever you're watching this. Uh, sorry it wasn't much of an update, but it's just, you know, little things of what I've been doing and what's going on, all the things. Thank y'all for watching and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.